Hey everybody, welcome to Sparks Fire and Bailing Wire. Getting a little out of sequence on today's video, but Zane is having a little struggles with this starter. This one's pretty similar to his. So we're going to tear into it, kind of help him out a little bit. These starters are pretty similar. There's a rod that hooks here and it pushes that button and makes the contact. The only difference between this and Zane's starter is this one is self-engaging. The shaft is kind of threaded. So when the motor runs it kicks that gear out by itself. Where Zane's has linkage that actually pushes the gear out. But this part's the same basic concept. So let's tear into it and see what we got. There's the stud where it makes contact. It's kind of pitted. It's not terrible. It's not packed full of mud like his was. Forgot to put my glove on. My hand's not real healed up yet. I want to make sure I keep that clean. She used some emery cloth on there to clean that contact up. That's pretty shiny looking. I'm going to try and tackle this piece. The stud comes through, that's where the battery cable hooks on. And then there's a contact in here. And then the other one that moves with the button is what bridges the two to make the connection to run the starter motor. I have a feeling with Zane's, his is not pushing in far enough to make that connection. Because his had a lot of mud and dirt in it, and I think it's probably up in here too. Because we know his motor runs fine. So there's not, there's not a whole lot to this, so it should be simple to figure out. Let's start by taking the stud off. You have to be careful getting this fiber insulator off there because you don't want to destroy that because it will create a short and then it will be ruined. That's how there's quite a bit of garbage built up back in there too. This is another fiber washer on the inside. I can go ahead and get this cleaned up. I'll clean these. I'll just use this emery paper again. This is going to take a while so I'd do that off camera. And I will pull this band off that covers the brushes and see what they look like. If you can see that or not, these brushes are probably well over half wore out. This thing's probably going to need a rebuild before too long. But it's not like it's going to be started every day either, so it probably lasts quite a while yet. And before I pull the end caps off, I'm going to take a center punch. Center punch makes some witness marks there. Make sure it goes back together the same way it came apart. That just consists of putting a couple dots on there. One on the end piece and one on the main motor case to line it up. Sure appears to be in good shape. Everything moves freely there. I'll release those two brushes off the field windings and the end of the motor will come apart. I blew that out there and now I'm going to take some electronic contact cleaner, rinse it out good. I don't 
that's rinsed out, I'm just going to take some emery paper and lightly scuff up the armature. I'll clean that off with some contact cleaner too. A little bit of grease to make the world go around. Put this back into the nose cone. Looks like the contact cleaner is dried up good in there. I don't want to put this part in the blast cabinet because I know it. I'd get abrasive down in there that I would never get back out. So I'll wait till it's reassembled and then just wire brush it real good before I paint it. You can see where the brushes attach. They're straight across from each other. And then the starter contact goes to these two sets of windings so they're both 180 degrees from each other. That's what you call a field wound motor. That's why it doesn't make a difference on these if it's positive or negative ground. It's going to spin the same way regardless. Some of the smaller DC motors, if you stick a screwdriver in there and stick, those are called permanent magnet motors. And on those, if you swap the positive and the negative, the motor will run two different directions. But this is going to run the same direction no matter what. So now we can put this end back on. I'll slide this end in. Turns out there's a little pin on both ends, so I wouldn't have needed to mark that motor because it's it can only go together one way anyway. Okay, it's back together, it turns freely. Now I can attach these brushes. Seems like almost all these motors come apart a little differently. You just have to do some finagling to get the brushes back on there. Main thing is to be careful not to chip or break any of the brushes while you're putting it together. Don't get forceful and start hitting on it with a hammer or anything. And now that the starter is reassembled, I'll try and demonstrate that the motor will turn the same direction no matter what. Just using a battery charger here. Hopefully you can see this gear on the camera. You can see the gear was turning that way. Now I'll reverse the polarity. Spins the same direction regardless of how you hook it up. Now we're ready for the starter button to go back on. Okay, we can start reassembling this now. I cheated a little and just threw this in the blast cabinet because it's really hard to get back in there with a file or anything to clean those contacts. But everything's nice and clean now and working good. To start with, I'll put this first fiber washer back on the stud. I'm going to turn the stud around. You can use both sides of that. This is the side that was used. And it's got a little bit of pitting on it. 
So I'm going to turn it around to that side so it's nice and fresh material on there. And that can go down into the housing. Now I'll flip it over and this piece can go on next that the starter rod hooks to. And this fiber washer can go back in there. That kind of spaces that bracket for the starter rod. Make sure nothing shorts out there. And we put this other fiber washer on. Now these washers that held all this together have them little tabs on there. They're kind of designed to go on and never come back off. But if you're careful, you can get them off without destroying them. So get those pushed back on there to clamp it all together. Okay, I'm not sure where my battery went south on me. I got it all together and those washers pushed back on with the fingers. And then I took the other washer and nut and locked them down to flatten them back out in there so it's all captive and staying together now. Next thing to do will be take my ohm meter and make sure I'm not shorted out against the case. So that will definitely cause a meltdown if you hook it up and it's shorted out. That looks good. So we'll go ahead and mount it back on the starter. Washers and nut back on for now so they don't get lost. Button's got plenty of travel so it's got to be making contact because it's about bottomed out. So now it's time for the moment of truth. Are we going to get a fail or a win? fresh paint nice and greasy but that's it ready to go a little more clean up some fresh paint be ready to throw back on the tractor well that's it for today's video on the starter on the tractor hope you found it helpful and useful and while you're checking out Zane at Hodgepodge Dodge Garage also head over to James at Third Coast OBS and Cody at Y Dock Productions they both got great channels with great content on them they deserve a few views. Catch you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button. See ya.